Hi again, this is Nick Roach. We're outside, a bit windy. The camera set back inside the property to try and protect from the wind a bit. Hope it'll be all right. As usual, we've got the noise from the ducks and the roads and everything else. I hope it adds to the experience as opposed to the tracks and, and is distracting. Getting a bit, bit cold out here now, a bit chilly. Um, been a nice weekend, but I'm wrapped up a bit. Right, a few moments ago I did a video on how things have changed here, going a bit deeper and I explained that I'm going what's happened here, the identification with being the physical world has been let go of for the awareness, the identification with one's being to be let go of and beyond and go beyond that and I mentioned I'd do a video on the levels of enlightenment as I'm experiencing them and as they're going deeper here. Now. First, it's a work in progress. And secondly, people will experience different things in different ways. So the overriding point here is, however enlightened you think you are, unless, let's say you are at the power Brahman stage, we're gonna call it that if you know about that, I understand that is about the end we one can get to whilst alive. It keeps going. And even at that stage, I guess there's still, from my, I would say, because it's all about emotional attachment, one can st will still keep going. There just might not be any more stages after that, but we shall see. And I use that name, Parabrahman, even though the Indian texts I've never used any Indian terms really before. I don't speak any other languages and and my teacher Barry Long just said it just keeps going deeper. You don't need any fancy terms. But when exploring recently the different levels and what I was going through next, I wanted to understand what I was looking at and looking for so I wouldn't push something away that was important. And I, I learnt that there's quite a lot of information out there already about the different levels. And rather than reinventing the wheel, giving things new names, new terms, I, um, that's going to confuse everybody, including myself. I'd rather find a model that already is there and that I can relate to, and I'm happy to stick with that. So you can look it up if you like, but the basic message is if you're enlightened, keep going. And excuse me if I'm spending more time going quiet. Well, I've noticed that in the last one. The words aren't there so much anymore. And I'm looking into the space of the being, I call it space, but it's not empty space, it's... And I do that, and that was indicating, letting go of the physical world, it's just, it's, the, it's behind what is, and yet it's in and around and everything, and that's experience, and I'm looking for the words to explain, describe, and I'm just looking, experiencing this, looking for the words to come, if they don't come, I just end up... <laughs> yeah. As I said, I'm only a couple of weeks into this new stage and I understand it can take months or even a couple of years to settle down, so we'll see how it does so. But I'll, I wanted to say a few words about the levels of enlightenment as it gets deeper, as I've just learned about it. Later on I might know more, I might know less because of what I've read in the books I might have forgotten by then, so we shall see. When people have talked about enlightenment and asked me before, am I enlightened, and saying they're enlightened, and they're more enlightened than me, or I'm not enlightened but they are, and I've 
taken the pragmatic view it's just a word if you want to say you're enlightened and I'm not or you're more enlightened than I am or he's less enlightened than you or more than you or they're all everyone's enlightened and just don't know it yet or no one's enlightened and doesn't exist well to avoid the arguments enlightenment just a word and the meaning you attribute to that word is up to you So there's no point arguing over somebody who's enlightened or who isn't. It depends on the definition of enlightenment. Now, in some ways, there is a definition of enlightenment. And yet in others, what I was saying, it turns out, was absolutely true. Because in enlightenment, there are levels that goes deeper. So it's different for different people. The set levels. And then their personal experiences can be different as well, depending on the path they're going, whether it's the the kundalini path with the energies coming up or whether it's more of an intellectual path or inquiry or dissolving emotion things will the paths will be different anyway but there are certain stages which apparently are static within everybody's path even if they seem to jump them and flip through them quickly or slowly the levels will be there there's an order that things happen in so For me, excuse the geese, I'll carry on, hope you can hear me. For me, I was taught from the very beginning that I am not the thinking unhappy person with all the likes and dislikes, opinions, belief. This is what I teach as well, therefore. I, you, your true, true being is the one watching, the awareness, the space, the bit you call I am, I inside you, that is your true being, your true nature. So as spend time holding on to that, and when the emotion comes up, which is identified with all the problems of the world, and you as a person, as you experience them consciously, in preference to holding on to the stillness, the I am, the emotion becomes conscious, separation the attachment becomes conscious and you become and you make the energy more conscious and you become more aware more self-aware more conscious of your own being a sense of I and bit by bit the little I the lower self they call it sometimes the ego they are noisy aren't they gets it smaller and smaller and the sense of being is less and less and there comes a point when you're identified enough with Let's call it the higher self, the stillness, the being. You identified enough with it that there's a shift of identification from the lower self to the higher self. The lower self is still there, but you know, I'm not that, I'm this. This is me now, but that's still there. And that is the first stage of enlightenment in the Indian, Indian the Vedic traditions and else others it's called at that time self-realization because you've realized the self you've become the higher self enough for it to be quite quite substantial stable you don't lose it all those years you may have been holding on to it and touching it connecting with it but you you are still the lower self but now you are the higher self the stillness and yes, the lower self is still there, jumping up and down, causing problems, and you're experiencing it, and you're struggling, and there can be quite a few years. Um, one teacher, apparently 25 years, in this lower self stage, in, in this self-realization first level of enlightenment. I say her 25 years because she did go beyond it, but there was apparently, as I've learned, a lot of people, teachers, they walk through the door of enlightenment and decide, wow, I'm enlightened, this is it. There's nothing more. Now, some people it happens by itself, without any action, without any activity, without any method or practice, just happens to them. But it seems, having got through the door of enlightenment, if you then say, this is it, I finished, there's nowhere else to go, nothing else to do, I'm done, that can tend to shut off all possibility of moving on. 
and you stay exactly where you've decided you finished the end and it's been said when one begins teaching that's gen whatever level one's at then that's generally where they'll stay because they've set up their stall I'm enlightened, I am this, this is where I am, this is what I say, and they're fixed rigid, this is it. Thankfully, I was told by my teacher, it keeps going, it keeps going, it keeps going, always deepening. So I didn't do that, as you know. But, I say as you know, if you see my videos or read my books, you'd, you'd know. But the majority apparently, or a large majority, percentage, they get to a stage, start teaching, that's it, I'm finished, I'm enlightened, and they stop moving on. I guess because you have to have a certain humility to say there's more to do, I'm going to keep going. I might be enlightened but I'm not finished. But it's easier to say I'm finished and they stop dead where they are. So back to the story, my feet making noise, excuse me. So we have at some point the identification shift from being the lower emotional unhappy self to the higher self, the I, the being behind it all. And for some years, one has them both going on. And those years can be very difficult years. They were for me, if you read my autobiography, eight years of difficulty, signed off sick for three months, high blood pressure, due to stress at work, nosebleeds, thought I was gonna die. And apparently this is not uncommon. This period can be very difficult and can be very shocking for some people if they get into enlightenment and life is still difficult. But there are people who get into the stage and life's easy for them. They have no more problems. So that stage can be changed, can be different for different people. And yet, the, exp the fact is they've, they've realized the higher self, but the lower self is still there. And in this stage, for me, you'd know I, I said I am the space where this is occurring because that was my teaching and where I was taught. I am the I, the stillness. But for many that haven't followed that met method, as they let, let go, identify less and less with the emotional unhappy lower self and feel the stillness of the higher self, the one being, compared with this, that feels like nothing. There's no substance, there's no essence. And they go, I'm nothing. I'm not here. This is nothing happening to nobody. I'm not the doer. I'm not responsible. This is just life ex expressing itself. And all these are in a sense correct. But the lower self is still very much there and they're only partially realized the higher self. Okay. Now eventually, the lower self gives up and surrenders and it unites with the higher self. And that can be when the center disappears in the no self experience, as I described it. There can be a sense of liberation, of freedom, as the, the two selves are no longer there. There's one united I, I am this. And the experience can be, as one comes to know the higher self, is what is responsible for creating the physical world, the sensory world. The higher self is the physical world. So once you unite with the higher ah. self, the higher self, you unite with the environment, the physical world, you become the physical world. And as I always said, I am this, I am what occurs. I am everything. I'm God. I'm God realized. I'm everything that ever happens, ever will happen, ever does, ever has happened, ever can happen. I am the totality of it. I am this. Now in the Vedic teaching, this is called unity consciousness or oneness. And it's called unity consciousness because one unites and becomes unified. The two selves are one and you're united with the physical environment. And compared with the stage earlier of being nothing, of not being the doer, 
of there being nothing to do and no one to do it. This is incredible. You become the physical environment. You become this. You become a god. The god. The only god. The one god in the one world. Your world. Because only one, and you're it. Because I'm not special. I'm just telling you how it will be for you, let's say. So in this, you become God. But not a, not a God above anything, because you've become the physical environment, everything that occurs, your body, other people's bodies, the whole lot. And no, you don't see through their eyes, although apparently if you're some of the guys I've heard about are quite psychic and sensitive, particularly if they've become the Kundalini route, that they have different energetic sensitivities and they have or can have sensitivity feeling what the other person would be feeling in that time of space. Um, I was empathic as a youngster, in some ways I still am, but I didn't feel that. But yes, for me, it's being the world, being everything. Now again, a lot of people, if they get to the stage, then announce, I've finished, I'm stopped. What could possibly be more than being everything? Beforehand, one was saying, what could be more than being nothing? Because nothing is a short, of course, the ultimate. What's before nothing? And of course, being everything comes after or before, depending on whether you're coming from the source out or from the world back in again. But yeah, the next stage is to be everything. And then you think this is it. And there are a lot of highly spiritual people, spiritual teachers, get to the stage and now this is it. I am now finished. I am everything. Fair enough. That occurred here in 2014, and I've in my videos explained, described a few a few times that has deepened, including two or three months ago when I became not only the physical environment but the space in it which I'd overlooked but that became part of the experience of being and then we get to the latest stage that's happened here only the last couple of weeks you think what could be beyond being everything well what's beyond being everything is being the point before anything exists. Being the source. Where the identification is let go of being everything. And once you drop the identification, just as you have to drop the identification of being the, the lower self, to become the higher self, It's now dropping the identification of being the higher self to being what is before anything occurs. You're being what is before the physical world manifests. I guess it's quite extreme, isn't it, really? But the incredible thing is and apparently, because I'm only new into this, excuse me. Um, the incredible thing is, and as I was reading other people talk about this, which is how I managed to allow it to happen here. You have to be prepared to let go of your enlightenment. You go from being a little person to being the space where it happens to being the whole physical world environment, God manifesting himself in form, to letting go. And instead of becoming everything, you can't, you've already become everything. You've got to let go of being everything. And what's before everything? You can't be nothing, because you had that before, the absence. This is before everything and before nothing and it sounds incredible and yet the fact is it is of no experience just so ordinary so ordinary
it did feel for a few days, and I can understand why they said it's letting go of your enlightenment. Letting go. Because one is beyond enlightenment. Beyond identification with being enlightened. In real terms, talking to people, yes, of course, you still are. There's no doubt. But the experience of it is not identified and experience it until one talks like this, there's nothing to say. And whereas previously I might be thinking what I was going to say in the video, let's say, or what I was going to write in a book or something or on a page, and there'd be the knowledge, I'm this, I'm this, this is all me. But now, there isn't that knowledge anymore. There isn't that knowledge, this is all me, because it's not. It's within me. This, again, is still myself. And the higher self, still myself. But I'm no longer the higher self. I'm the point before it exists. Before the world exists. Before anything exists. But this is not the end. I understand, and keeping in mind, like I've said, this can take months, if not years, to settle down, so I shall say more about this later as it does so. There's another stage beyond this. Now, this is called Brahman consciousness, or beyond consciousness. where you're beyond anything exists. But there's a next stage called Power Brahman, which means beyond Brahman in the Vedic te texts. And still, for me, I'm still looking and understanding that because it hasn't happened here yet. So there are two aspects I'm, I've understood about that. One is one drops the identification with being the source beyond everything. Because there's still a sense of identification. This is me, this is what I am. I'm trying to remember the other one, I can't right now. That's okay. The point is, the point of this video is this is always deepening. But if one says, I'm enlightened, I am now finished, and you haven't, then you will stop exactly where you are. You won't go further. And I don't know why I wasn't taught about these levels. I guess my teacher, Barry Long, thought the majority of people hadn't got to the stage and he was te teaching the masses. Didn't want to give them something else to think about and worry about. And he wasn't into Indian traditions anyway, so he wouldn't have used these terms. But he was definitely going, going deeper all the time. So that's the message here. Just keep going, no matter how enlightened you are, until you get to beyond where I am, there's always more to do. Thank you.